EarthSci requires a PC or a Mac with a graphics card that supports OpenGL 2, Java JRE 7 or greater, and Windows, Mac OS X, or a Linux operating system. All versions of EarthSci are distributed together. So to run EarthSci, go to the folder labeled with your operating system and Java architecture. If I have a Windows PC with a 64-bit version of Java, I will want the Win64 folder and run the EarthSci application. The first thing that we see when we open up EarthSci is the globe. But to the left of the globe is the catalog, which is where we can see all of the data from the common Earth model. To the right of the globe is the scene panel, which allows us to see all of the data that is currently available to see in the scene. And to the bottom of the globe are all of the information panels, from the console to downloads to the information panel itself. This is where we can see what's happening with EarthSci or any metadata that's associated with any layers that we're looking at inside the globe. So to navigate the globe itself, left click anywhere on the surface and drag your mouse around. This will pan around the surface of the globe. While you are doing this, you'll be able to see a gizmo in the center of the screen. This is showing you the point at which the camera is looking. And that point is always going to be on the surface of the globe until we start looking at subsurface data. The gizmo itself is two lines, a red line and a green line. These lines represent the latitude and longitude of the globe. To change the angle you are looking at the globe, instead of left clicking, right click on the surface. As you drag your mouse now, you'll be orbiting around the gizmo. You'll notice that the gizmo now has a line going straight up and down. This is the z-axis or the height. As you're orbiting the camera, you are now changing the angle at which the camera is looking at the globe. There are two ways to zoom in and out. You can either scroll with the scroll wheel, or you can click on the scroll wheel or your middle mouse button and drag up and down. This will give you a slightly smoother zoom, however the scroll wheel is very convenient. Now that you can navigate the globe, the first thing you're going to want to be able to do is load data. The scene panel on the right of the globe is where you can see all of the data that's currently loaded into EarthSci. I'll just turn off some of these layers by unchecking their checkboxes. Now onto the catalog over to the left of the globe. It contains a list of data. This is all the data that's inside the common Earth model. I'm going to click through the data tree looking for earthquakes. I'm going to load in the recent earthquakes RSS data feed. By double clicking on the layer, it's going to ask me if I would like to add in the full data tree to the scene. And I'm going to click yes. Now it's given me a couple of errors, but it has still loaded the data. Depending on what's in the RSS feed, the errors will change, but it has loaded the data in as points. This layer is reading the Australian Tsunami Warning System's RSS feed, picking up the most recent earthquakes in the Australasia region and displaying them on the globe. If I mouse over any of the points, it will give me information about that particular event. I'll now load in the global earthquakes. This will immediately show us a number of blue dots along the surface of the globe. You'll notice that they're all along plate boundaries. Now this data is colored by depth, and it is a subsurface data set. So if I click on the blue marble May 2004 layer in the view, I'll click on the layer to select it. And once I've selected it, I can go to the top of the scene view where there is a slider and drag that to fade the layer off. And now I'm able to see down underneath the surface of the globe to all of the different subsurface points in the data set. One of GA's layers that is also a web server is the Aster product. I'll load this in to show you how they work. To begin, it loads the data straight off the internet. It loads up a version for the level of detail that I can see. And as I zoom in, it loads up more and more data for the surface that the camera can see. It's not getting all of the data at that resolution, just the bits that the camera can see. If I go to the Downloads tab and drag the camera around, you'll see a list of small downloads coming up and quickly disappearing as EarthSci gets them off the internet. If I look at the Progress tab, I get much the same thing, a list of quickly finishing download jobs. The other interesting panel below the globe is the information panel. 
The information panel will show metadata for any selected layer, as long as that information exists. In the scene view, you'll notice that some of the layers that have been loaded up will have little eyes on the right hand side of their names. Clicking on any of those layers to select them, the information view will act as a web browser and show you PDFs, images, or web pages that are associated with those layers. You'll also notice that some of the layers in the scene view have a capital L next to them. This capital L marks them as layers with a legend. To see the legend for that layer, select the layer and then go up to the top of the scene panel next to the opacity slider and click the legend button. This will bring up a pop-up with the legend for that layer. Next, I'm going to show you vertical exaggeration. To show you this, I've loaded up the crustal boundaries, a 3D model of geological surfaces underneath Australia. Up on the top right-hand corner of the globe view, there are a number of controls. These controls allow you to do things like change the HUD elements or use 3D glasses. One of the last controls, furthest to the right, is a large slider with a number of marks against it and a number. If you drag on the slider, you will change the vertical exaggeration, going right to increase the vertical exaggeration, or going left to decrease it. You can see this works on any 3D models loaded into the scene. The earthquake point layer that I loaded in previously, the crustal boundary surfaces, or the digital elevation model on the surface of the globe. Double clicking on a layer listed in the scene view will cause the camera to move so that it can see the extents of that data. When fading the opacity between layers, it's important to know about the draw order. All of the layers open in Earth site listed in the scene view in their draw order. Anything that's listed at the top of the scene view is drawn before anything listed at the bottom of the scene view. This means that if I change the opacity on the radiometrics map, which I've added underneath the aster map, that the radiometrics map, which is sitting on top of the aster map, will fade through to the aster map. However, if I do it the other way and change the opacity on the aster map instead, the radiometrics map will stay unchanged. To delete layers from the scene, all you have to do is select it and then go up to the top of the scene controls and click on the red X, which is the delete button. This will only delete layers in your scene. Any layers in the catalog will remain unchanged. And there is absolutely nothing to stop you from adding them back in. Also at the top of the controls are scene reset, scene save, and scene load buttons. To reset the scene, just click on the button. It will delete all the layers in your scene and load up the default ones. Thanks for watching this introductory video on EarthSay. For more information, please visit ga.gov.au slash earthsci.